Good day, everyone. Today, we'll explore Plato's concept of the philosopher king, a fundamental idea introduced in the Republic. Plato's vision of leadership is clear. Only those who have attained actual knowledge, particularly knowledge of the good, are fit to govern. This is no abstract ideal, but an essential element of his broader philosophical framework, where wisdom and power must be intertwined to ensure a just society. Plato believed that only through the union of knowledge and leadership can rulers act not in self-interest, but for the true benefit of the city. As we examine the philosopher king today, it's important to ground our understanding in the dialogues highlighting this concept, specifically the Republic, books five through seven. Here, Plato builds his case, and in book seven, the cave allegory vividly illustrates the philosopher's unique ability to see beyond illusions and grasp reality. This metaphor remains essential to understanding how philosophers, having seen the truth, are uniquely equipped to lead others toward it. In this lecture, I urge you to engage deeply with the lecture notes and the works referenced. It's crucial to approach these texts not only for their political insights, but also for their ethical implications. The Republic connects the idea of just governance with the virtues of wisdom, courage, and temperance, ensuring that a ruler's soul is ordered correctly before they can guide the city. Be sure to revisit the Republic alongside the other dialogues, as these works collectively paint a picture of Plato's broader vision of leadership, justice, and the moral responsibilities of those in power. Lecture 19, The Philosopher King, Leadership and Wisdom. Good day, everyone. Today, we will delve into one of Plato's most influential and ambitious ideas, the concept of the Philosopher King. Introduced in the Republic, this leadership vision is rooted in the fusion of wisdom and political power. Plato believed that only those who have attained true knowledge are fit to rule, as they can distinguish the genuine good of the city from the mere desires of the masses. Through this lecture, we'll explore the philosopher king, the importance of wisdom and leadership, and why Plato deemed the combination of these traits essential for justice in society and the soul. Plato's vision for the philosopher king arises from his broader philosophical framework, particularly his theory of the forms. In the Republic, Socrates asserts that the ideal ruler must be knowledgeable and understand the form of the good, which transcends ordinary human experience and illuminates all moral and intellectual pursuits, Republic 508E-509A. This grounding in the good allows the philosopher king to lead with justice, as they alone possess the clarity and insight necessary to see beyond self-interest and ephemeral desires. In Book 5 of the Republic, Socrates famously declares that until philosophers rule as kings, or those in power, become genuine philosophers, the troubles of cities and humanity will persist, or 73D. This sets up the central premise of Plato's political philosophy. Only those who have achieved wisdom through the study of philosophy can govern in a manner that promotes true justice. For Plato, philosophers are not merely thinkers. They are individuals who have transcended the illusions of the material world to grasp eternal truths, particularly the good, which is the highest object of knowledge. The central metaphor of the cave, introduced in Book 7, illustrates the difference between ordinary rulers and philosopher kings, 514a, 520a. Most people, Plato argues, live in ignorance, mistaking shadows on the cave wall for reality. Philosophers, on the other hand, have ascended out of the cave and can see the world as it truly is, illuminated by the light of the good. This ability to discern the real from the illusory is what qualifies them to lead. The rulers of a just society must be philosophers because only they have the capacity to align their actions with the highest truths rather than being swayed by mere appearances or public opinion. Plato defines wisdom, Sophia, as the knowledge of the good, and this wisdom is essential for just leadership. In Book 6, Socrates likens the good to the sun, which not only makes things visible, but also makes knowledge possible, 508b, 509c. Just as the sun enables vision, the good enables understanding, and without this understanding, leaders cannot truly know what is best for their people. 
Wisdom is not simply technical expertise or cleverness. It is a deep understanding of what is ultimately beneficial, both for individuals and for society as a whole. For Plato, wisdom is intrinsically tied to justice. In Book 4 of The Republic, he argues that justice is the proper ordering of the soul, where the rational part governs, the spirited part supports the rational, and the appetitive part is kept in check. 441d, 444a. The just ruler, like the just individual, is one who has cultivated wisdom to ensure that reason, rather than appetite or emotion, guides their actions. Without wisdom, Plato contends, rulers will inevitably be led astray by the temptations of power, wealth, or popularity, sacrificing the good of the city for their personal gain. This distinction between rulers who seek truth and those who pursue personal ambition is at the heart of Plato's critique of other forms of government. In Book 8 of The Republic, Plato describes how different regimes, democracy, oligarchy, democracy, and tyranny, each succumb to their own internal contradictions, ultimately leading to injustice and the degradation of the soul. 544a, 569c. The philosopher King, by contrast, is immune to these corrupting influences because their pursuit of the good ensures that their leadership is always aligned with justice. However, Plato acknowledges that the philosopher king ideal is difficult to achieve in practice. Throughout the Republic, Socrates expresses skepticism about whether philosophers could ever come to power in real-world political systems. Most people, he notes, view philosophers as impractical or disconnected from everyday life, and thus are unlikely to trust them with political authority. 470-408a. Moreover, the temptations of power and wealth can easily corrupt potential rulers, steering them away from the pursuit of the good. The challenge, then, is to cultivate rulers who not only understand the good, but are also committed to living in accordance with it. Plato's philosopher king is not merely a theoretical ideal. It is a practical guide for how rulers ought to be educated and how cities ought to be structured. The philosopher king's wisdom enables them to see beyond the immediate demands of the masses, prioritizing long-term justice over short-term expediency. This requires not only intellectual insight, but also moral fortitude, the ability to resist the pressures of public opinion and the temptations of power. In Book 3 of The Republic, Plato argues that courage, Andrea, is one of the essential virtues of the ruler. Courage in this context is not simply bravery in battle. It is the knowledge of what is truly to be feared, the loss of the soul's harmony and the forsaking of virtue, 429b, 430b. The philosopher king, by understanding the good, knows that true harm comes not from external threats, but from internal disorder, and thus they are able to make difficult decisions that are unpopular yet necessary for the health of the city. Temperance, sophrosyne, is another crucial virtue for the philosopher king. Temperance involves self-mastery, the ability to control one's desires and impulses in order to maintain inner harmony. In Book 4, Plato describes temperance as a kind of harmony where the rational part of the soul governs the appetitive and spirited parts. 431e, 434c. For the philosopher king, Temperance is necessary because it ensures that they are not ruled by personal desires, which could lead them to prioritize their own interests over those of the city. A ruler without temperance is susceptible to corruption, as they may be swayed by the pleasures of power, wealth, or fame. The philosopher king's leadership is not limited to intellectual and moral virtues. In the Republic, Plato also emphasizes the importance of practical wisdom, or phronesis, which allows rulers to apply their knowledge of the good to the complexities of governance. This practical wisdom enables them to navigate the challenges of ruling a city, balancing the needs of different groups while always keeping the common good in view. In this way, the philosopher king is not an isolated thinker, but an active participant in the life of the city, using their wisdom to guide political decisions that promote justice. One of the key challenges Plato identifies in the Republic is the difficulty of educating rulers in such a way that they develop the necessary virtues for leadership. In Book 7, he outlines a rigorous education system 
designed to cultivate philosopher kings, beginning with physical training and musical education, progressing to the study of mathematics and dialectic, and culminating in the contemplation of the form of the good, 518C, 5119D. This education, Plato argues, is essential for producing rulers who are not only knowledgeable, but also virtuous and capable of governing justly. Although the philosopher king may seem like a distant ideal, the underlying principle that wisdom and virtue should guide leadership is highly relevant in contemporary discussions of governance. In our own time, we can see the consequences of leadership that is disconnected from moral and intellectual foundations. Plato's critique of democracy in Book 8, where he describes how demagogues rise to power by pandering to the desires of the masses, is a striking reminder of the dangers of leadership that is not grounded in wisdom. 561a, 563e. The philosopher king serves as a model for enlightened leadership, where decisions are based not on popularity or self-interest, but on a deep understanding of justice and the common good. In this sense, Plato's vision is not limited to ancient Greece. It speaks to the enduring need for leaders who are both wise and virtuous, capable of guiding their communities with integrity and insight. In conclusion, Plato's concept of the philosopher king represents an ideal of leadership where wisdom and power are united in the pursuit of justice. Through their knowledge of the good, philosopher kings are uniquely qualified to govern, as they can see beyond the immediate concerns of the masses to what is truly beneficial for the city. While the realization of this ideal may be difficult, Plato's emphasis on the importance of wisdom in leadership remains a powerful and relevant idea, one that continues to challenge us to consider the qualities we value in our leaders today. By grounding leadership in wisdom and virtue, Plato offers a vision of governance that is not only practical, but also profoundly ethical, reminding us that the ultimate goal of political power should always be the promotion of justice and the common good.